So, some of the books that I really enjoyed reading while doing this research. So, The Mabinogian, I hope I'm saying that right, is a collection of old British myths. And some of these stories, uh, they're just magic. A lot of it is about the old gods of the Celts and their children and stories and quests that they went on. And there's lots of magic and I just love it. It was compiled, I think, in 1849 by Lady Charlotte Guest, and it looks so small, but they're all in here. Um, and I have read a bunch of them in different translated versions, as this, this particular version is written in uh, a quite old form of English, and um, it just talks about the stories of our people, of the Celts, and the Brits and the Welsh and it kind of combines them all and they feed into each other so often you will find Celtic myth um, as in Irish Celtic myth it's very similar to Welsh myth and the names of some of the characters are really close and some of their attributes are, are very similar but their stories switch and change so they share a real connection of myth but they have sort of different variations on it. And so when I was delving into Celtic myth myself, I, I did what they do and took pieces of this and pieces of that and mixed them all together. Anyway, if you have any interest in the stories of the Mabinogian, there's some really great um, podcasts that you can listen to uh, on Celtic myth. And one of them... It's got like 60 episodes and I can't remember the name of the podcast right now, but I think it's just something of like Celtic myths or something along those lines. And it's done by a husband and wife and they have covered so many Celtic myths, like 60 of them or something. There's so many episodes. I haven't finished listening to all of them, but they're actually really, really good. Sometimes I just put one in and go back in my house and whatnot and listen to some old stories of my people and I find it really, really good and really inspiring, entertaining but then I've always been a fan of myth and fairy tales since I can remember. And so I began this journey by examining Joseph Campbell's theories on the monomyth. Um, this is the book here, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. So I first downloaded the audiobook and listened to the thing in its entirety just to get a real sense of this great work. Um, what an amazing man Joseph Campbell was. His research is a lifetime of dedication into investigating world myth. Um, he he travelled the entire world and found that all stories had a similar pattern, and this pattern he called the hero's journey, the monomyth, the meta narrative. So it's like one big pattern that most stories follow, ones that have a hero anyway. Um, and why do all these cultures around the world retell this meta narrative, this monomyth, this giant story? Why? is it no matter where you go we're all telling the same story and how does that affect our innate sense of identity so this was where my research really started this book is about man's struggle to find identity through the use of ancient myth another book that really um was really interesting for me and my work was this one, Women Who Run With The Wolves, which uh, 
delves a lot into the symbology used within fairy tales rather than myths, but combined with Joseph Campbell, um, a lot of the ideas and um, psychological observations from this one are also picked up by Joseph Campbell. So they, they actually feed into each other, one with myth and one with fairy tale, so gifting it to contemporary story, which is what I've done. Um, some other books that really influenced me throughout the creation of my work was um, obviously Celtic myth and I really wanted to focus on this because I identify as a descendant of Celts and um, because my parents are both from the UK and I've always wanted to know a little bit more about that genetic history and so I have personally always had an interest in the myths of my people. So for me, diving into that was really natural. So some other books that were really influential on me. Um, firstly, The Alchemist. This is one of my absolute favourite books. So... It's a short book, it doesn't take long to read, but I recommend everybody should read it. It's a quest story and an adventure story, but it is super inspiring. It has two layers to it. So you've got the quest, you know, the protagonist goes on a journey, and then you've got another layer that's interwoven throughout it, and that's this layer of symbol and inspiration and, and meaning. Now, this book is so effective in delivering the meaning making to audiences. It's one of the most inspiring books you can ever read. The way it uses symbol to attach to meaning making is very effective when used within the quest story framework. I was inspired by what the author has done and I wondered if I could use the quest story framework as well to attach to more contemporary issues such as um, deforestation and climate issues um, as well as the global pandemic of depression to deliver hope or deliver healing. So another work that really inspired me was this one Sand Talk by uh, Tyson Yunkapora, who is a lecturer at my university, although I haven't met him. Um, and it's it's really, really interesting. I highly recommend this book to anyone living in Australia because when I first moved to Australia as a child, I was personally really excited to learn about the Indigenous cultures of this country. And when I started at school in Australia, I asked the other children about Indigenous Australian cultures because I didn't know anything about them coming from overseas. And my classmates couldn't tell me anything. I was like, well, how do you say hello in their languages? And, you know, well, what food do they like to eat? And, you know, anything? And... They couldn't tell me anything and I was really shocked at it and I was really disappointed um, because the native cultures of a country, it's what makes a country unique, you know. This book is written by somebody who identifies as Indigenous, um, although slightly removed from his culture, which was which is a really interesting place to come from. But it opens me up to the way of thinking that they use and it's not comparable to the way we think and it's really, really interesting. So Tyson Young Kapoor's book, Sand Talk, highly recommend this for anybody. It's very philosophic, intriguing and it offers something really new and different, which I think is needed. Um, it's really beautifully written and I just really, really like it. Adriana's Clue. This is, as it says, a guide to the symbols of humankind. 
I have spoken a lot about symbols already, but they are a huge part of my work, both my creative and my exegesis. Um, and a book like this is really deep investigation into the use of symbol. Um, most of the other books I have on symbology are more like dictionaries, um, apart from, you know, the works of Joseph Campbell and um, the Women Who Run With The Wolves book. So that's just another element to that. My investigations, oh, so many books, but these are just the main ones I thought I would mention. So an introduction to literature, criticism and theory. This has been like my Bible while writing my exegesis. There is so much good stuff in here about the way that stories can be used, the ways in which you can create stories, just anything to do with writing and all the different elements. Eco-criticism, huge part of this. Postmodernism, a lot of stuff. Um, and it's, it's one of those books that you kind of just like need to read and reread and digest and go through with a fine tooth comb and really pull out the good stuff because there is so much in here that has been really interesting. Um, and this one here, really interesting to delve into practice led methodologies. Um, so if you are looking for something on that then this is a good reference as well. I think that's all the books I really wanted to talk about today.